Hello and welcome to The Weekly Yes, a podcast where two best friends talk about their joint mission to say yes to life. I am your host, Yara Skakfjord, and co-host is my bestie, the amazing Kristen Guerin. On today's episode, Kristen and I talk about scarcity and clinging to the external. We discuss how important it is to share, even if you don't want to. And we talk about how life is essentially just a simulation. For today's Fast Facts, let's just talk about the fact that we are doing a two-part episode again. We do talk a lot, Kristen and I. You might notice that we don't really get to talking a lot about our yeses specifically, at least not in the same way as we've been doing it in previous episodes, as they were simply other things that were wanting to come through during our recording. So, without further ado, I'm going to drop you straight into our conversation for part one of It's All Pretend. Enjoy. There's a word for it in Iceland. I guess you would say in English, you would just say you crash, like you've like been excited for something yeah. for a while and then it happened and then that's what's happening. That's why I'm tired. It's just the, the crash after the buildup, if you will. In Israel, they say, I crushed, like I crushed on the couch. Or I, we would say I crashed in the US. And yeah. Say, I crushed. I crushed. Okay. All right. It's not right. I think they're just trying to say crashed and they all think it's crushed. So tell us about it. Tell us about your day. I went back on on set to uh, do the remaining three episodes of the series I've been doing. So that was that was a lot of fun. It, it felt like it felt like a back to school kind of energy. Everyone was like super excited to to be there. But it was what was very interesting about it is that not about the day itself, but the day before. The day before I was feeling I like I was talking to I was talking to Yadin and I was like, I am really I'm I'm scared. Like I'm really nervous. Last time I went, like the first the first round when we did the the first three episodes, I I didn't really know anybody. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know what it was gonna look like. I did like I didn't know anything. So I kind of like went in with like a it is what it is. It's gonna be what it's gonna be, right? Like, I don't know if I'm going to like anyone. I don't know if I'm going to like this in general. So I was just, I was really going in very just like open, ready for whatever and no expectations, no expectations, no pressure. And now I'm like, I'm just feeling the pressure and I'm, and and I am having expectations. Now I know people, (laughs) you know, and now that I know the people and now that I love the people, I don't want to disappoint the people. Whereas before it didn't matter as much, but it matters more simply because I love the people more. It was just like internal in my head, like, oh my God, what if all of a sudden they don't like me anymore? You know, or what what if all of a sudden I show up and I'm having an off day and they just like regret having hired me, (laughs) you know what I mean? And not wanting to let them down. Like I I don't want to have an off day because I don't want to, yeah, just like I don't want to disappoint people. And then there was also this part of me because I don't know if there's going to be more rounds of this. Like, I don't know if I'm yeah, going to have right. an opportunity to to go back and like and meet with this group or work with these people. So there's almost like this tension of like wanting to hold it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. okay, so you have to make the most out of the few days that you have on set because like this might be the last time, like that whole thing. And I was like, whoa, you know, like this. I don't know if I necessarily yeah. want to call it lack mentality, but like the, it's maybe maybe part of it, like a little bit. But it's more just like you have something now and you had a good time or like you enjoyed it and now you want to hold on to it for for dear life. So like the pressure is not just to do well, but also make the most of it and have it be just as fun, if not more fun than last time. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember like the day before I went on set last round, I was so much more relaxed and I was showing up relaxed and now I'm just like a bundle of nerves. He actually, he gave me great advice, Yadim, to, he said, well, first of all, don't forget that it's pretend. He was like, not, not just the fact that you're showing up and playing a character and playing pretend, but also just like, it's just, you know, just like life is a simulation. Like it's all pretend. It's literally going to say like everything is, right? Every, everything is pretend. That's so but true. <laughs> pretend. It helped me so much, honestly. Like this whole like meta way of looking at it. So that was, that was my past, past two days. It's interesting. I've been in a similar place. Um, of course, uh, of course, I've been in a similar place around very different circumstances in which I've been, I was clinging to things and around it was a lot of needing external circumstances in order to bring me peace 
like needing external circumstances to fall into place to bring me peace and scarcity mentality. So the, the two things happening simultaneously. And the scarcity was actually in large part about timing of like, oh, I'm running at a time or which is basically what you're saying too, of being like, oh, I only have so many days. And so I want to like make the most of it. And I want to, you know, make sure that like, I, I want to embrace every moment. I don't, I'm, and that fear, because ultimately that is scarcity of being like, well, what, what we're saying in this, in this moment is what comes next won't be as good as what I currently have. So I got to make sure to enjoy this because like, that's it. Like it all sucks from here. You know? <laughs> yeah, this is a, like, as good no as it gets of, or yeah. Huh? Or in my case, like what was is as good as it got and that's it. Yeah. And that's it. And it won't, and it won't get better from here. So, so I need to cling to the end. So it was, it was clinging. Like that's what it felt like. I felt like I was really clinging to things. And a few days ago that started to shift. And what the shift was for me was, boy, I was not going to talk about this, but okay. <laughs> here we are. I wasn't going to talk this- about my set experience either. I was like, very, I just, I literally wrote, I'm not going to talk about that today. I might do it next week or the following week if it feels good. Here we are talking about things we don't want to talk about. Okay. So my birthday was this past weekend on Friday. And I had, I gave myself a solar return astrological chart reading with Joshua Robbins at the Kabbalah Center. It was amazing. 10 out of 10 kgs recommend. It was so great. Like it was just, he was so intuitive and so on point, and I just so grateful. Thank you, Joshua. And what he said to me, so my questions, I was asking about place to live because I'm between two different places right now and saying, like, where do I want to live? And then also being like, where the hell is my soulmate? Like, how the hell am I single? Where the hell is my soulmate? And what he wound up talking to me about was, especially in regard to the placement of where to live, I, what I was looking for in these questions and, and work questions as well was an answer, right? Like, very Pisces of me to just be like, I don't know, like I'm going with the flow and like, I don't really have a, I don't have a clear path and I don't really know like what to do. And I I just want external answers, right? Like God, tell me what to do, right? Astrological chart, tell me what to do, right? And, and he was like, so here's what this location would be for you. And here's like, here's the gifts of this location. Here's the gifts of this location and the challenges as well. And now you get to choose which of those is more in alignment with your objective in life or what you want or why you're on this earth right and he was like so now let's talk about like the real question here under that which is why are you on this earth and what are you know what I mean because that will allow you to make the decision and we wound up having a a, a bit of a chat he was like you know to each his own he was like but I really believe that we're on this earth to this is very capitalistic or very spiritual in general is to have a relationship with the creator Mm -hmm. have a relationship with the light to to find more of the light within us to to shed the the layers of bullshit surrounding the light around you know in us so that we can be more of the light and shine more brightly and 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 bring more light to the world i couldn't agree more i forgot that i just got so like you're saying like it's all pretend i got so wrapped up in the simulation recently and also i think there's you know being as as you know being a witch being a mystic being able to like It feels like you're like almost in charge of, like you're like controlling the divine, if that makes sense. We're not 100% not. No, you're manipulating slightly. Right. You're doing alchemy and you're doing, you're kind of like, and that's what it feels like. And it sometimes feels, I don't know, and I feel like it just got away from like channeling and into sort of an ego place of like making things happen, using these tools and techniques to make things happen in my life. Right. So I accepted and I said, what if just for one week? I played by this objective, just trying it out. That was maybe my yes of the week, right? But it just happened a couple of days ago. So that's my yes of the last few days. And, the, and, and my yes of the year, my yes of my new year, my 34th year. So I'm trying this out and, I, and a couple of days pass and I'm, and I'm th- sitting with it. And I remembered when I was in college and high school and I was super, super, super devout Catholic, like incredibly spiritual, just a little Pisces old soul kid who had been, you know, mystics and monks and past lives and like came into this little body of, you know, this like little white girl in Connecticut and like the only, you know, <laughs> like such a mystic being like, okay, what I have is this like local little church that's like right down the street from my, you right. know what I mean? So that's what I use. It was like the Pope of my church. 
I was the Pope of Fordham University when I went to Fordham for college. Super spiritual, super theology, concentration in American Catholic studies. I ran the, the, like the, the, basically the youth, the church groups. Like we had like a bunch of different, like, you know, what was it called? I don't remember what the name of it was. It's been that long, but I, I ran the church of Fordham, essentially. Super spiritual. And there was this Pedro Rupe quote that came to me and I remembered from my college days, um, which was this. Nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. And I get emotional reading that. And there's part of me, like a very old part of my soul that's just like has known that before. All of this long story is to say, I'm in yoga. So I'm sitting with this and then the next morning I go to yoga and, and I'm meditating and I had this realization and it almost like threw me off my mat. I was like, oh my gosh, God is within me too, right? It's not like falling in love with an external thing. It's actually about self-love as well. And the depth of like, there, there's a part of me that's this ego. There's nothing wrong with that. Ego, human, like I came into the life to do that, to practice that, to live in this emulation. Mm -hmm. And I love that, right? Like I love working. I love, like there's so many things I love, right? really love chocolate. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love the, I love Me being too. in the ocean. I love the, you know, like there's so many great things. I was texting you right before this meeting of being like, I love being an adult. And just, I love like making money and being, I just bought a salad and being like, I make enough money that I can just like buy myself this $15 salad that like is, you know what I mean? Like way overpriced. But I was like, it's fine. Like I'm an adult. I like took the train to work today. And I was like, oh, I just like love being an adult. I just like walked on the train and like used my card. And, you know, it's just like very, I love being a human, right? And we know that I love that part of myself. But there's also this deeper part of you that is creator energy, that is light, that is part of the universe, that we're all connected. We're all one. At the end of the day, the needing things externally in order to bring you peace and happiness, the fact that, oh no, this is, there's scarcity. There's, there's not enough. I'm losing time. I don't have enough time. All of this is just part of the simulation. None of that is true. You are, you have creator energy within you. You are literally part of the universe. You are part of the divine. I mean, doesn't that like freaking blow your mind? What do you, you know what I mean? It's like, how can I, and it, and it came to me, I was like, that's self-care. You know what I mean? Like we talk about self-care is like go to like the spa or whatever. No, self-care and self-love is like honor God within you, you know? And that includes not needing the external. Like, oh my gosh, I don't need a, a yeah, sure. I've definitely, hey, listen, universe, still definitely looking for a husband. But like, <laughs> like I am like, there. God is with, I have God within me. Like, right, I have creator within me. I have light force within me. Nothing else is needed to make yeah. me happy. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I don't need a partner to make me happy. I don't need a booking to make me happy. Are you kidding me? Anyway, those are my thoughts on that. I am, I'm obsessed with all of that. Absolutely obsessed with all of it because it actually goes back to kind of what you were saying at the beginning of like, oh, you were kind of, you know, being in the, in the alchemy part of things, you know, trying to shift the external. But the realization that you just made, and I'm sure we're going to keep, keep making this realization. We're going to keep forgetting and we're going to keep coming back to this point. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. that's just how, how it goes. The realization of like, oh, wait, 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 like all I need is within me. And from there, because you realizing that you have the create the light of the creator within you, you are a creator and you can actually, you can affect the simulation because you are also the creator. You know what I'm saying? So you are also creating. So you, you can affect your external. You, you can, you can affect and shift your external, but realizing it from a place of it's a, it's a different kind of place. You know what I mean? It's a different kind of perspective. It's more of a, it's not coming from an anxious place of like, oh my God, I can't deal with the world as it is right now. So I'm, so I'm going to, yeah. and the feelings that come with it, the feelings and the internal stories that come with it. So I have to somehow fix it. You know, so it's coming from an anxious place. It's not coming from a, 
everything I need is within me. All right. And from this point, we're going to move forward. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So that's because from, from the anxious place, there's no space for, there's no space for God. Whereas yeah. if you're like, oh, here I am. And oh yeah, God is within me. And then you're going to let, let the, the rest of God or like the rest of the light, which also exists every, everywhere else to be a part of this, you know? Yeah. That was just, that was just so, so beautiful. I was, I could feel as you were speaking, I was just like, sitting so heavily in my chair just like I was completely still yeah. I was not fidgeting I was just like almost like a statue like listening listening to you I also just want to point out one thing because I, th I think you told me uh, a couple of days ago or yesterday or something that you were in a class with one of your teachers and your teacher said that you definitely should share what you don't want to share because that's where the most growth is. So that's oh literally gosh. what you just did. You literally said that any anytime I don't want to share, that's when I share. Because that's where the most growth is. And that's oh literally God. what kind of both of us just did. It's like, yeah. I don't want to share this. And then we wound up actually doing it because that's what we needed to do. Because yeah, it's exactly brilliant. what we didn't want to do. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, she told me this less than 24 hours ago. I can't believe that I forgot it already. Well, you didn't. Your subconscious really like my, my, yeah, yeah. absorbed it, obviously. Wow. Um, Interesting. But it also reminded me of Yadina and I were talking about talking about something similar this week. Of this is very Pisces season. Everything. This is like very. I like, love it so spiritual. Much. Yeah, it's like a very, very spiritual God stuff. I mean, we do talk about spiritual things here, but this feels like extra spiritual. So we're talking about something that was about giving because Pisces season is is about yes. give, giving, yes. right? So so that that was something that we were kind of like looking at and practicing and also coming from a place of like w one thing was like giving. So where can you like give more without expectation or without expecting anything in return? And then the other part was love more. Even if it's a person mm -hmm. that doesn't show gratitude, doesn't show appreciation, doesn't, you know, anything. How can you, and like maybe a person that you resent, maybe a person that, you know, that you, you know, yeah. a difficult person in your life or whatever, that, that you're having a hard time loving, right? Because that happens. It's sometimes hard to love the people we love, you know? Yeah. Like, how can you just love them more? You know, how yeah. can you, like a person that you're having, I don't know, a dispute or kind of like a tension with or like friction, whatever, how can you just practically, practically show them more love? Not like from a place of like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, open my heart more. No, like how practically can you, can you do it? Like next time I talk to them, I'm going to really focus on listening to them next time. I, or like something that's a bit more active, like, oh, maybe I'm waiting for them to reach out to me because I'm always the one to reach out. So I'm not going to be the one to reach out. But what if I do? What if I'm the one mm -hmm. that does that? You know, because at the end of the day, what is it that you want? You want the love and connection. So yeah, does it matter how, how it shows up? Does it matter who starts, starts it or like, you know, that, that was kind of like the, the vibe. And in both of these things of like giving more or loving more, same thing, kind of, sort of, right? Is the account is not between you and the other person. The account is between you and the creator. Mm -hmm. Meaning yes. that if every time you love or every time you give, you are putting it in the hands of the other person to either multiply it and or give it back to you, it, it's not, it, it's sort of like a horizontal way of looking at it, yeah. but you should be thinking about it vertically, you know? Yeah. So you are gaining points in, in your account or like marbles in the marble jar between you and the creator, not between you and the other person. And so that's sort of like, so you're not, so, so you're not giving or loving with any expectation of receiving anything back. That is that is truly unconditional, because if you were giving unconditionally, you wouldn't care if they paid you back or not, mm -hmm. whether it was now or in the future or like whatever. But but regardless, the count isn't between you and them. You know, the, the account is between you and the creator. So it's sort of like when you are giving or when you are loving, you're not waiting for the other person to give it back to you. The creator will find a way to give it back to you because energy is never lost ever. If you pour all of your energy in your work and it seems like you're getting nothing in return, turn around and look at other aspects of your life and see if it's not coming through elsewhere. See if, oh, maybe your, your relationship with your family, your spouse, your 
your children or like whatever, your friends, maybe those are thriving right now, even though your job might not be giving you much, you know, yeah. kind of similar to what I was talking about last week in with the with the rooms, <laughs> you know, and like yeah. looking at other I other think, other rooms. It's actually very similar. I would agree with that. Yeah. So it's like how so that's also going back to what we talk about often about like living with this kind of certainty and trust that wherever you're putting your energy, it is going to come back to you somewhere, somehow, sometime, you know? Yeah. And it's really not, like, like you were saying, sort of like clinging to the external, like really wanting a very specific thing to be right here, right now, because my humanness wants things right here and right now, or else they aren't happening, or else I don't believe yes. it. It's possible, or else I don't believe that it exists. So it's funny. This week was also about sharing for me. Mm. <laughs> I swear, guys, we didn't talk about this. It just completely happens. serendipitous. And I literally wrote down the very first thing that I was going to intentionally was like, that's something I can share. I can talk about. So my birthday was this week, and I was really excited to start the year, start this new year for myself in a state of giving, in a state of abundance. And so I started the year giving a lot, giving birthday gifts to everybody else, right? Like from me to everyone else. A few years ago, I did something maybe like 10 years ago at this point. Back in the day when I, when I was a big Instagrammer and, and I posted a picture of my parents and I like right like my, the day of my birth, right? And I wrote this like beautiful little thing that was basically like on my birthday thanking them for my life, right? Like being like happy birthday to my parents and to my mom, especially, who like went through so much to, I mean, not just the nine months, but also like nearly died at the end. I almost died. It was pretty traumatic. I was like, thank you to them for my life, right? And thank you to my ancestors. I started with that. Thank you to my ancestors. Thank you to my parents. And I remember like my mother was so touched by that. This is so many years ago. And I still remember this. And every year since it's been, I'm not, I'm having this, I'll, maybe like, next year I'll send her a gift. Mom, I hope you're not listening to this. I'm sure she's not. But maybe I should. Maybe I should send her a gift on my birthday. I'm also the eldest child. So this is, you know, the day like you are, this is the day that they became mothers, you know, mm -hmm. it's a really big day in their lives as well. And I was just thinking of like how my, oh my God, I'm so emotional. It's such a Pisces, a little day over here, but like how my birth was such a gift to all of these people, right? And like imagining that, that delivery room of like, like my, like, you know, most, most first days you receive gifts, but like on my first, on your first birthday, you are the gift. Right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. So, like, so true. You know? My grandparents on both sides were there. My parents were there. Like, I was, the, and this was a big deal. This is the first, not the first grandchild for a couple of them, but like I was, you know, I was the first baby in this family. And again, I was just thinking of like, how can I make this, make the birth? Like, do we have it reversed? Do you know what I mean? Are we doing this the wrong way? I, I am so inspired by this. I'm like, I've already decided that this is what I'm going to do next year for my birthday. Give my parents presents. I, 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 I really, I think I will. I hope yeah. that none of our parents are listening. My parents wouldn't know what a podcast was if it hit them across the... <laughs> <laughs> They're not listening. <laughs> Just don't put this clip on Instagram, please, because they, they might see it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, so I was giving to everybody else on, on my birthday, and I was so happy to spend money on my friends. I had friends over. I, had, I gave like, to charity. I gave to, I did, I did a tarot reading for every single person at the party. Except oh, wow. one person who didn't want one, but I did. And they were like extensive tarot readings. And then I did a healing on one person in the party, like a little healing, light healing. And I was like, wow. And, and I bought all this food and I bought, and I was just like, I was so happy to be able to gift. It was like the amount of joy that it brought me on this day. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. way more joy than if like people had taken me out to dinner or done, yes. you know what I mean? Oh my gosh. And, and today, actually, a friend took me out to breakfast. One of my best friends took me out to breakfast this morning, not you, another best friend. <laughs> took me out to breakfast this morning. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> someone who, else. Who, who do I need to, who do I need to exactly. punch? <laughs> and it was, he treated me right to breakfast. And I loved it. Like I had a great time with him and really enjoyed spending time. But I think for me, it was like, there was so much more joy in the in the gifting than there was in the receiving. And I think also for me, the other thing about here was just like starting with an abundance mentality of yeah. like, boy, did I spend a lot of money on my birthday? Yes, on other people, right? And that's actually the perfect way to start the year because it tells the universe, I need this much money to, <laughs> to because I want, and not, not for me, but like, look at what I do with the money. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You give me money and I'll, and of course, I think the next day I wound up getting like 
three times that in my, in a, I get a, got a check like the next day from my, from my agents for a thing that I just, I just shot like this morning. I was like, great. Like that's, you know what I mean? The money like immediately flew, came back to me. Yeah. So sharing. Sharing. Yeah. That concludes this week's episode, part one of It's All Pretend. We will see you next week for part two. You will find us on all major podcast platforms as well as YouTube. And you can follow us on Instagram as well at The Weekly Yes. Keep saying yes, and we'll see you next week.